this uh, very graceful introduction. Um, honestly, uh, I did not think that um, within three months I would be standing here before um, some of the most courageous Syrians, or Syrian Americans. Uh, about like uh, three months ago, back in February, I literally thought I was the only person thinking about speaking up uh, for uh, the civil rights of Syrians. Basically, I was extremely inspired by what happened in Tunisia and in Egypt, particularly in Egypt. I spent days and nights watching all the uh, American media speak and cover the uh, revolution in Egypt. And I remember particularly recording everything that was on Fox, that was on CNN, and that was on MSNBC. And the way they thought about what's going on in the Arab world, how they thought it was all driven by the uh, Muslim brothers, and so on and so forth. It was very interesting to see the um, American uh, media personnel and some of the intelligence, um, uh, some of the individuals from the intelligence uh, community literally and blatantly uh, say that they're willing to support the dictator because it was, uh, quote unquote, good for them. It was on their side. Now, I'm not gonna go into how fallacious that argument is and how fallacious that perception is. But basically what happened is that after the fall of, I'm not going to say the regime, because the regime still exists in Egypt, but we did see a strong, powerful nation literally collapse in Egypt. And for the first time in many decades, the people of Egypt and the people of Tunisia, I'm oh, sorry, and the people, the people of Egypt and the people of Tunisia started to have hope again that maybe a reform will um, begin. And I started a small website called um, It was supposed to be anonymous. The whole purpose of it was to help people on the ground, hopefully communicate and facilitate uh, the exchange of ideas. Within a couple of days, I discovered that there was a giant undertaking already. It was called the, and I mean, it was very honest, it was straightforward. The revolution against Bashar al-Assad. You can't really get more frank than that. You can't really get more courageous than that. And it was a giant effort. And very soon, we started to somehow coordinate the exchange of information. But what was very, very uh, moving was the fact that people in Syria actually started to respond. And the main concern that every Syrian had was the same concern that every Arab had, or the same kind of perception that are Syrians really, um, are they up to it? Are they able to actually stand up and say, we want our freedoms. Are they able to, I mean, do they have it within them? Do they have that kind of courage? I did not really um, have any doubt on that. But it was kind of daunting upon me that people did have that kind of doubt. And I thought maybe there was going to be a slow but very long process and gradual process. It took only three weeks, or probably four weeks, before the Syrian revolution literally erupted. And obviously you know the rest. So. What I'm going to actually be playing here, it's a video that I put together very quickly, and I think that video is gonna outline some of the reasons um, in very simplistic terms for those who are not um, aware, or probably just refresh the memory of those who have forgotten where we were and where we're going to. And then after that, after we've seen the video, um, I'd like to have the chance to basically say a few more things and then I'll leave the, uh, uh, the podium to someone else. So, maybe. 